Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Survival Games mini series. In this episode, we're going to write the arena class uh, internals. Um, basically, right now, when I add a player, uh, at first, make sure that there's enough room to add the player. If there are enough spawns, uh, then it will add the player to the list of players. It'll teleport them to a spawn, uh, and then it'll tell them that they've joined. But uh, obviously, the game will never start. Um, we need to write the code so that once enough players join, uh, the game will begin a countdown, and then when the countdown is over, the game will start. And that's basically going to be updating this arena state. First, it'll be waiting, then once enough players join, it'll start the countdown, and that arena state will be counting down, or just this countdown right here. Then finally, after the countdown's over, it will be started, and the game will begin. When we go to write the listeners, which will probably be in the next episode, we want to, we'll probably need to use this arena state for, um, to make sure that the arena has been started. For example, um, if you wanted to give points for when a player kills another player, or really, you wouldn't want to count one player killing another player until the game starts. So you might want to write one listener that, that um, cancels all damage while the arena state is not started, and then once the arena state is started, uh, you probably want to have a death listener so that when a player dies, it will handle that correctly. So the arena state is going to be very, very important, and that's what we're going to be working on today, getting all of that stuff working well. Okay, so for the add player method, right here is where we're going to go and get started. Once we add this player, we now want to check and see if there are um, enough players. So if players.size is greater than or equal to spawns.size. Remember, we're using spawns.size as the number of players that we want to join. So for every spawn, we want to have one player join. You could change this to be some artificial limit. Um, if you wanted to say that only 10 people have to join, even if there are 24 spawns, you could still do that, uh, but we're just going to be doing it based on the number of spawns. So if it's greater than or equal and arena state, or sorry, or and state is equal to arena state dot waiting. So we only want this to happen once. So if it, it's currently waiting, then we want to start the countdown. But if it's counting down or it's already started, then we don't want to trigger another countdown. So this only should happen one time. And this is where we're going to say start countdown. And now we're going to go ahead and write a class that will handle the countdown for us. It'll just be a very simple class that will extend um, the bucket uh, bucket task, I think that's what it is, um, and then it will just do the countdown for us. So we're going to create a new class called countdown. It's going to extend, I think it's um, bucket task. Yeah, that might not be it. No, it's not. It is. Um, let me take a look and see what it is. Um, bucket get server get scheduler, and then it would be. It says bucket task right there. So why isn't that working? Is this an interface? Ah, it's an interface. Okay. Okay. So then this is the wrong one. Uh, let me just go find the name. There's a class that we want to use, not this interface. Hang on one second. I took a quick look and it's called Bucket Runnable. And this is a class, so it's supposed to extend Bucket Runnable. And now it only needs to have the uh, run method. Okay, so this is the countdown, and if you take a look inside of Bucket Runnable, you'll see that it has a bunch of methods that will help us. This is, um, I, I prefer this to um, using a um, 
a uh, like just an, a runnable, so like scheduling with a runnable, because then you can. It has these nice methods called like cancel is really helpful, especially with a countdown, because as soon as it gets to zero, we obviously want to cancel it, and then um, that's pretty much the only useful one, but it, it is very helpful. So we're going to, in the countdown, it's going to extend bucket runnable, and then there's a little bit of information that we need uh, for the countdown. We first, actually we don't need a plugin because that's in the main. What we do want is um, a var args int called counting nums. What this means is um, we can stick in there all of the numbers that we want to count. So let's just make, uh, I'll explain this in a second, or it'll make more sense in a second. Um, counting nums. I'm just going to call this C nums just to make it easy. Uh, then we're going to say counting nums is equal to Sorry, new. Uh, there we go. New array list um, integer. Then it's going to be arrays dot as list counting nums. Okay. Why doesn't this work? Uh, list list of array list of it's strange oh because it's supposed to be see okay sorry I had a little mental thing Ugh, okay so generics is going to be really fine for int um, c in c nums Counting nums dot add c, just because generics is going to be annoying, so we have to do this. So what this is going to do is this is going to store a list of all of the numbers that we want to be counted out loud. So basically, um, this run is going to have a counter, which we're going to define right here, um, private int i. So we want to have um, an int start. And then we'll say this dot i is equal to start, and then that. So then what will happen is, let's say that we do it for 60. That would start at 60 seconds, and then every time this runs, it would count down 1. And then uh, if it's a counting number, so let's say we want it to count at 60 seconds, then at 30 seconds, then at 20 seconds, then at 10, then 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. For all the numbers of the counting nums, then we'll go ahead and print out a message. So we'll go ahead and say um, i minus minus. We'll go at the bottom. So this run, this will run one time per second, and we're going to say if counting nums that contains i, then we want to do uh, okay. We're gonna um, have it also pass in the arena because we want to be able to know um, to which arena this applies. Uh, the main reason is so that we can get a list of all of the players in the arena and send them the message. We're going to say arena.getplayers, and then I guess we need to say for player p in arena.getplayers, we want to call p.sendMessage, chatcolor.gold, and then we'll say the game will begin in i <coughs> seconds. So first we'll say 60 seconds, then 30 seconds, then 20, then 10, then 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's if counting nums contains i. Okay. If, um, so let's say if i is equal to 0, and we could probably just stick this at the top. Then we of course want to return, or not return, but we want to, yeah we do, we want to cancel and return, but before we do that, we of course want to tell all of the players, um, we want to say the game has begun. Uh, 
And I suppose that for, if you wanted to make this countdown more general, you could have it pass in messages in the constructor to put here. This assumes it's a countdown for a game that's beginning, but, um, you know, either one works. So that should be good for there. Now we just need to actually use it. So where we can say start countdown, we're going to say new countdown. And this countdown will take this for the arena. It will take in an int start, which will be 60. We want it to announce it 60. Well, maybe 60 is too much. Let's just say 30 seconds. It'll announce it 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we, of course, want to say dot run task timer. And it's going to be doing um, main dot get plugin. The delay is going to be zero, or yeah, I think that's the oops, I think that's the delay that it says. Yeah, long delay, and then the period will be one thousand, so every second. So that will go ahead and start the countdown. Now I suppose that we also need to have it say that when it's done it will update. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll say um, right here arena dot set state arena state dot started. But I'm gonna put a little note here and say if you want to generalize this class, you probably want a runnable here. Because right now this class assumes that it's when a game starts for an arena, but if you wanted to make this just a general countdown class, you could have one of the parameters be a runnable that would run uh, when it's done, but I'm not going to bother doing that. So we need to have a um, set state. We'll just do um, an arena state called set state. And I'm making this um, protected because um, no one should touch this except for the plugin. Um, so if for whatever reason you were to add some kind of like an, an API with events, why does this not work? Oh, boy. Um, if you were to add like an, an API for events, which we might do if you're interested, if you want to add custom uh, events to this for like an arena start event, arena end event, things like that, we could, but then you wouldn't want the ability to set the state manually because that would be done by the game. And then also, right here, we want to say um, this dot state <coughs> equal to arena state dot countdown. So now the arena state is at countdown, and then we go ahead and start a countdown. Now also in remove player we want to make sure that we can declare a winner. So the remove player will be called if a player leaves the arena by way of a command uh, or if they leave the server for any sort of reason. It would obviously want to remove them. Uh, so we've done all of the adding stuff and now the game will start correctly so when we write the listeners we'll be good there. Uh, but here we want to say if players.size is less than or equal to 1 so if there's zero players for any reason, which this should not happen because this should be triggered when there's one, but if there is zero, or if there's one player, um, then we'll say uh, if players.size is equal to one. So if there is, in fact, one player left, um, then we want to go ahead and broadcast this. We'll go ahead and broadcast this message uh, to everyone. So that, because you know, it's a win message. Broadcast message. And then we'll go ahead and say in the message players, oops, dot get zero dot get name has one on arena ID. And we'll just take out that on. So it'll say whichever player has one arena and then whatever the ID is. So otherwise we want to still send a message, but since there are no players left, we can't have a name, so we can just say 
um, arena <coughs> ID has ended. So if there are no players left, we don't really know who won, but we can just say that, that the arena um, has ended. I don't know how, if that's great grammar, but it gets the idea across that people can now um, join. And then when we say that they have won the arena, in either case, um, I guess we want to go ahead and get this arena ready for another person to join. Uh, so obviously the spawns in the chest would stay the same. The only thing that would be different uh, would be the state is equal to arena state dot um, waiting players dot clear. But also once this player has won, then we want to. Uh, oh no, wait, never mind. We don't actually have to because since the um, when we call remove player with the last player, it'll still remove them from players, and we don't actually need this line. So we're good there, but then it'll just say that someone has won. So we just want to set the state back to waiting, so that the so now the arena has um, no people left in it, uh, so the game can just go back to be waiting for more people to join. And I think that that should all end up working out fine. If we need to change anything, of course we will. So that's all for this video. We wrote uh, the arena internals for starting the game, triggering the start of the game, uh, the countdown, of course, and then also triggering the um, end of the game when someone uh, wins. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn and what you want to see in this video. If you like this video, click the like button, uh, and I'll see you with some more coding videos soon. Bye, guys.